Hey Spitfires, it's Miss Amanda. Wow, what a week we're having, right? So I wasn't planning to make a video for you today, but I think it's important that we gather. So we've gone through other hard things together, right? And I thought maybe today was a day we should get together and read a book because books are amazing. So where to begin, right? I want to start by telling you that the most important thing to remember right now is that everybody is safe. The problem at the Capitol is over. There are no more rioters there. The building is closed and safe and everyone inside is safe. And that's the most important thing. And you are safe, right? Okay, that's the most important thing. Um, I think it's important to discuss facts and something that is factual about what happened yesterday is that a lot of people were angry about the presidential election and its results. We know that it was a fair election, but some people don't believe that. And maybe some people don't care about fair or maybe their definition of fair is different from the generally accepted definition of what is fair. So, um, so they made some bad choices, right? They went to the Capitol and at first it looked like it might be a protest, but then we know that it wasn't, right? They felt very brave, but not the right kind of brave. The kind of brave that comes from being very privileged and safe. People who feel a little too safe can sometimes make very bad choices, right? I think that these people did not feel enough love for other people. And I think that their privilege made them feel stronger than they should have felt. So in Spitfire Club, we talk about identity a lot, actually. And we talk about how we're all born into identities and our identities help to make up who we are. And we've, you know, we've got our identities and we've got our choices and we've got our personalities and all of that comes together to make the magic that is you and me. So I was born with white skin, white package. I didn't choose it, it was given to me. And it, in American society, has helped me more than it should. Because our skin is made up of what? It's just cells. Some cells have more melanin, some cells have less melanin. I have almost no melanin, I'm very, very pale. And melanin doesn't do anything. It protects, well, I mean, it does. It protects, it gives your, it gives your hair pigment, it gives your eyes pigment and it protects your skin from the sun. It does not change the way your brains work. It does not change the how hard you work. It doesn't change anything. It just kind of has to do with where your family came from ancestrally. But these people mostly had white skin too, and they felt very safe making bad choices. And part of the reason that they felt like they should make these bad choices is because they did not have a strong enough love or understanding for other people. And that is something we need to not do ourselves, right? Every day we need to work harder to make sure that we love other people well enough and that we try to understand people well enough. So one of the things that I have struggled with yesterday, because we're going to be honest, right? It is I want to be like, why, why, why? And I've decided that the most important thing I can tell you is that we don't always know why. And we don't always need to know why. Sometimes why is a very important question. And there are a lot of whys about yesterday that are very important. But for you, as a kid, I want you to focus on making sure that you don't feel too entitled. 
And if you find yourself making other people feel like they are less than you, ask yourself why. Why am I doing this? And stop. Because we're all people. We're all people. So I have a lot of wonderful books and I couldn't decide which one to read to you, but I've decided to read you a new one. Um, it's called Love is Powerful. And it's about a real live little girl named Mari. You wanna see Mari? Here's a picture of Mari in this book. Where's Mari? Where's Mari at? She had a protest, a real protest, not a riot protest. Um, and Mari has a message for us. She says, love is power. Let me get the book in the right position. There we go. Mari spilled her crayons onto the table. They made a messy rainbow. What are we coloring, Mama? She asked. Mama smiled. A message for the world. Mari ran to the window and pressed her nose to the glass. Far below, people walked in different directions. Buses, cars, and taxis honked and grumbled down the busy street. Mari asked, how will the whole world hear? They'll hear, Mama said, because love is powerful. Mari climbed into her mama's lap. The crayon smelled sharp and new. Mama used one to write some letters. Even though mama's words stretched across the poster, they would be too small for the world to read, Mari thought. Mari picked up a crayon. As she made her own sign, she imagined her friends in their apartments across the city. Grandma and Grandpa, a plane ride away, and all the people in other countries. Mari wondered, how will the whole world see our message? Mama hugged her close. They'll see, they'll see she said, because love is powerful. Here we go, down an elevator. <laughs> Mama handed her a coat and then they both laced up their shoes. Mari tucked the posters under one arm and held Mama's hand with the other. They slipped through the elevator doors. Down, down, down they went, all the way, ding, to the lobby. Mari hopped onto the sidewalk, then stopped and looked up. The street was packed with people, more people than she'd ever seen in her entire life. Mari tugged on Mama's arm to ask her to kneel down, and then she whispered in Mama's ear, Mama, it's so loud, and there's so many people. They won't hear our message. Mama said, they will, little Mari. There's a quote here. We may not have chosen the time, but the time has chosen us. John Lewis. Mama lifted Mari up and for a moment, she felt like she was flying. On top of Mama's shoulders, Mari could see the crowd swell for blocks. Hundreds and thousands, even hundreds of thousands of people marching down the street. Some signs, some held signs like Mari's, all saying different things. Everyone cheered as they walked together. Mama joined them. Mari bob bobbed above the crowd like a canary fluttering over trees. She felt tall as one of the buildings. Here's another quote. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can. Are these people angry? Maybe. 
That's okay to be angry, but are they breaking things? Are they hurting anybody? No, this is a protest, not a riot. Mari raised her sign for everyone to see. Even though she was small and the crowd very big, so big she didn't think anyone would hear, she called out her message. Love is powerful. Through the roar, her voice was heard and someone shouted the message back. Mari yelled again and more joined in. Again, she yelled the message. Love is powerful, love is powerful, love is powerful. And this time, when the crowd called back, Mari's message rumbled down the street and echoed off the buildings. It was as loud as breaking waves. Love is powerful. So here's a note from Mari. She says, I was only six years old, but I knew why we were there. Our new president had said some terrible things about women. He made people feel scared and angry. We went to the Women's March along with hundreds of thousands of people in that cold day to sh uh, um, that cold day to show that love is really powerful. A few of my friends were with me, with their parents. We rode the subway from Harlem to Midtown together and after spending, after spending time making our signs, I made two, love is powerful and be kind. When we joined the crowd at the march, I couldn't see that well and was tired of walking. My mom lifted me up onto her shoulders as we marched down the crowded streets. When I sat on my mom's shoulders, I felt proud holding the signs I had made earlier that day. When I called out, love is powerful, to my surprise, the people close to me repeated it back. And each time I said it, more people joined in. Soon, hundreds of people were echoing my chant of love is powerful. At that moment, I really felt its power. One voice can be heard and one voice can make a difference. My advice to you is believe in yourself, be confident, and don't be afraid to speak up. And remember to speak up not just for yourself, but for other people too. Love, Mari. Yeah. So this book's brand new. Um, and I think Mari's right. I think love is powerful. I think that there are a lot of other things that are powerful too, that are necessary. But for you and me, and for our purposes right now, I think it's to remember that we should always love. Okay? So, let's go into the rest of this week with love and hope for what the rest of this new year can bring, okay? We're gonna start a new Spitfire unit soon. It's gonna be on happiness. Still trying to figure out exactly when we will start, okay? But stay tuned, all right.